Hi, I'm Victor from Divimundo.com and in this tutorial we'll have a closer look at the reCAPTCHA badge and how to style it. So first we will prevent overlapping issues by bringing the badge to the front. After that we will push the badge up a few pixels to prevent conflicts with other fixed items like a back to top button. After that we will move the badge to the other side. And last, we will simply hide the reCAPTCHA badge without breaking the Google guidelines. So let's get started. Bringing the badge to the front. The first issue that we're going to solve is this one. You can see it in the bottom right corner where the reCAPTCHA badge is overlapped by elements on the website. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will find all the links and resources needed in the description below the video. So I'll head over to the first blog post and I'll scroll down to find a little CSS snippet that will solve the problem for us. I will copy this one and I will head back to my WordPress dashboard and I will go to appearance and customize. And by the way, this will work for all WordPress themes. And the, in the bottom, I'll go to additional CSS and I will paste the snippet. And I will not see the reCAPTCHA badge here because I'm editing the website. So I will publish and I will go back and refresh my website. And now you can see that the badge is visible all the time when scrolling the website. So just a brief explanation. What we did here was to paste a little snippet with the CSS property Z index. And this is the property that decides the stacking order of elements on the website. So the higher number, the higher stacking order it has. So it's now in front of the other elements because they have lower value than 999. But be careful to use a too high number because you don't want the badge to overlap light boxes or pop-ups on your website. Two bringing the badge up. So maybe you have some other content in the bottom right corner, like a back to top button or a chat icon or something like that. And it's a bit crowded. Let's bring this one up a few pixels. I'll head over to the blog post and I scroll down. And this is the result we are looking for. So let's copy this CSS snippet and we'll head back to the theme customizer and add this CSS snippet. So I just paste it and publish. And now we will add a 90 pixel bottom margin. So I'll go back to the page and I'll refresh. And now you can see that the badge is higher up. And you can of course adjust this number if you want it lower or higher to just change the numbers here. Three, move the badge to the left side. Okay, maybe it's way too crowded here in the right corner and you want to move it to the left corner. So let's go to the third blog post and move it from the right to the left. So cheers to the user Samith, if that's the right way to say it, uh, a user on Stack Overflow that shared this CSS snippet. So let's copy it and head back to our custom CSS. I will actually replace this CSS. So we'll move the badge down again and Boom, we'll move it to the left. So I click publish and I'll refresh the website and keep an eye on this badge. And now you can see that it's on the left side and we can hover it here. You could of course combine this with the CSS snippet number two to move it up a few pixels if you have stuff in the bottom left corner as well. Or hiding the reCAPTCHA badge. So maybe you just think that this badge is really annoying and you want to remove it. And yes, you can do that without breaking the Google guidelines. Because if you do it in the wrong way, the spam protection will stop working. But if you do it in the right way, you can hide the badge and still have the spam protection. So let's go to the fourth blog post and scroll down to the small CSS snippet copy it. We head back to the um, theme customizer and now we can actually remove the 
old CSS. We won't need that one anymore. And publish. And as you can see, it says visibility hidden. Do not use display none because then the spam pro protection will stop working. So if I refresh in front end, we have it to the left now. We can see that the badge is actually gone. But we are not done yet. We have to do one more thing in order to comply with the Google guidelines. So if we have a look at the blog post, we can see that in the Google FAQ for the reCAPTCHA version 3 badge, it says you are allowed to hide the badge as long as you include the reCAPTCHA branding visibly in the user flow. And the user flow is the page where you have forms using the reCAPTCHA. So please include the following text and then Google provides an HTML snippet that links to the privacy policy and the terms of service. Let's copy this HTML code and head back to the page. And you should not paste this in your CSS settings. That would probably break your design. No, you should go to the contact page on your website where you have the form. And I will enable my DV Visual Builder. I'll add a text module below my form module. So let's see, there we have it. And now I will click the text mode to have raw HTML. And I'll paste the snippet. And you can see that I have some line breaks that doesn't look too good. So I just fix that by moving this up here. This one up here, that looks better. And now I can style the text because it's too tight. I have uh, got a width of one on this page. So I'll go to the design tab, spacing, and uh, margin top, I can add like 20 pixels. Now you see we have some spacing here. And if I want to, I could of course edit the text like the color and the font size. Don't make it too small though, because then you're probably breaking the guidelines anyway. This is how you style it and how you add the text to your form. So you have to do this on every form that's protected by Google reCAPTCHA on your website if you want to hide the badge. That's all for today. If you're looking for more design tricks for the badge, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials coming your way. Thanks for watching.